Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, October 6, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, Obama pushes gun control while shipping guns to ISIS. Then, Fed spend major cash on robot teachers. After that, the Strong Cities Initiative to control police. And Matt Drudge surprises the InfoWars crew. I'm not really a fan of like rock stars, movie stars, people like that. I like politics. And I'm sitting there during that 70 second break and Matt Drudge rounds the corner over here. Uh, and it was just like total and complete deer in the headlights. And I'm still double taking here. And then he's hiding over there in the shadows right now. I'm not kidding. They're gonna say this is another conspiracy theory. And uh, we got Anthony Gucciardi, is Matt Drudge over there? He is over there. That's next. Come on, just for on a second Info to give the national Wars media a heart attack. Nightly news. Can you just walk over here behind the stage? You're not going to believe it. Now, see, it's, it's, it's right around this way. I had one photo of And it's that type of behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. <laughs> Well, it's been a very interesting day here at the InfoWars studio. Matt Drudge swung by a total surprise. Alex was flabbergasted and it was quite exciting. Uh, he was here back in the studio giving an impromptu interview and all of the highlights from that are going to be coming up later in the show. But he was here just discussing some of the things that he thought were really the most important stories for people to be focusing on. Uh, one such thing is technology and to just kind of watch this rise of the robots, watch artificial intelligence and how all of these things are going to be augmenting our society. So take a look at this story out of the uh, Washington Free Beacon. The feds have spent nearly half a million dollars to create robots that can tell stories to preschoolers. Now, do you think that they're doing this just so they can let your children have fun while they're learning, spending nearly half a million dollars for a nine month program? Absolutely not. Now, it's obviously something a little bit more in depth than that. Now, this project say they're seeking to push the envelope of normal storytelling that's aimed at four-year-olds. The Massachusetts Institute of Technology is conducting this study. It began last month. So they say social robots can engage children as personalized learning companions. They hold great promise in augmenting the learning experience of children with parents and teachers. And the researchers explain that robots are unique because they can play, learn, and engage with children in the real world, physically, socially, and emotively. So it's not enough that your children are attached at the hip to their uh, iPhones or whatever. Now they're gonna be interacting with robots every single day. So obviously we know that there are two parts to this story. Um, one, they're actively getting your children used to interacting with robots, but also it is about building the artificial intelligence of these machines. If you think about it, robots presently kind of have the minds of children and so now they are interacting with children at these preschools and learning off of each other because that is how artificial intelligence is going to grow, is by learning and interacting with us. So basically they say that this, this project is gonna develop these robots that can act as tutors to tell preschoolers long stories. And they're going to assess the efficacy of an autonomous, personalized social robot that engages as a learning companion on the language development of preschool children. So not only are these preschool children gonna be <laughs> getting their language 
uh, components there, helping them with the language development, but the robots themselves, the artificial intelligence, can also develop its own language. So that's what's really happening here. And uh, they're gonna be developing a new personalized story generation algorithm. So like I said, that project's going on for nine months. So of course, they're introducing your children to this new world of robots. Let's think about it. These four-year-olds, when by the time uh, robots are ubiquitous, they're gonna be the ones that are gonna be buying all of these new robot toys. And they're also going to be interacting with them. For instance, a story out of Fox News, uh, a robot sold us a Chris Cornell CD at Best Buy. So we've talked to you a lot about the rise of the machines, how they're gonna be taking over jobs. And here, this person, this author here, went to Best Buy to buy a CD, which is currently a, you know, a decidedly old-fashioned medium, and they didn't speak to a human being the entire time. It was a computer and a robot that smiled and handed them their CD there at Best Buy. So we already can see those jobs kind of going to the wayside, uh, but now, out of the LA Times, your next boss, a computer algorithm. So <laughs> they're talking about how computers are beginning to learn on their own. Years of research into artificial intelligence is beginning to pay off. And, and this article goes on to talk about many of the ways that artificial intelligence is already ubiquitous in our life. We might not even recognize it. And this is Pedro Domingos. He discussed this subject with the Times. He's the author of a new book, The Master Algorithm, how the quest for the ultimate learning machine will remake our world. And he goes on to talk about how this machine learning appears to be poised for rapid proliferation throughout our entire society. And they say, should humanity embrace machine learning or fear it? And he said, there's much to embrace and fear in machine learning. And of course, you know, he talks about there are some quite helpful things that machines can do for us. He also says that it will eliminate many jobs, but it will also create many new ones. But perhaps the biggest danger is that machines will cause damage while trying to serve us because they take our wishes too literally or because they lack common sense. So learning algorithms are already making a lot of important decisions every day from who gets credit, who gets interviewed for a job, or who gets flagged as a potential terrorist and they make mistakes. The cure for that is to make them more intelligent. And so this is one of the big arguments that people have with autonomous weapons. These things are already being developed. They're already working on them, already being semi-autonomous where they might have a human deciding uh, to fire a machine gun or something like that. But very rapidly coming down the line, we have these autonomous weapons that are gonna be deployed on the battlefield. And now the UN is basically concerned about the fact that the US and the UK is trying to delay their talks because there are so many of these autonomous weapons in development that they don't want to put any stops on being able to use these in the battlefield. So this is the United Nations. They've been warning that these delays in lethal autonomous weapons or killer robots are moving too slowly. Lobbying for a preemptive ban on the weapons is intensifying at the UN General Assembly, uh, but a deal they say might not emerge quickly enough to prevent these devices from being deployed. And observers are saying that the US and the UK are seeking to water down an agreement so that it only includes emerging technology, meaning that any weapons that are put into practice while discussions continue are beyond the reach of a ban. So of course the concern is that a lot of money is going into the development of these autonomous weapons. And so if there is a ban on it, they're gonna wanna return on that investment. So a ban would of course uh, put the kibosh on that. Now Noel Sharkey, he is gonna be a guest of ours tomorrow on the fourth hour of Overdrive that I am hosting, so be sure to tune in. But he was interviewed for this story. Uh, he's been interviewed a lot. He goes to speak to the UN many times about the threat of these autonomous weapons and he's talking about how China wanted to discuss existing and emerging technologies, but the wording that was insisted on by the US and the UK is that it is only about emerging technologies. Ostensibly, this is because there is concern that we will want to ban some of their current defensive weapons, like the phalanx or the Iron Dome. However, if the discussions go on for several years, as they seem to be doing, Many of the weapons that we are concerned about will already have been developed and potentially used. Now, Sharky goes on to detail some of these weapons that are being used. Uh, for example, the X-49B, it's a fighter jet that can fly on its own, and there are, are already contracts 
for swarms of autonomous gunships. He also goes on to talk about, you know, not they're, they're not all fully autonomous weapons, but some semi-autonomous lethal weapons, such as the South Korean sentry robot SGR-1. It patrols the country's border with North Korea, uh, detects intruders as far as two miles away, and the robots are armed with machine guns. Currently, they're controlled by humans, but they're reportedly capable of making a decision to kill without human intervention. Israel is deploying machine gun turrets along its border with the Gaza Strip, uh, and the UK's Tyrannus fighter jet flies autonomously and can identify and locate enemies. And he goes on to, to talk about the fact that they are not just looking to get one fighter jet, but to actually have the edge on the battlefield. They are looking at swarms of these autonomous fighter jets. That's the concern that, uh, that he is most concerned with there at the UN. One thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. And indeed, we are seeing the effects of that brainwashing to this very day. Now, Obama immediately put out the call to all of his minions in the media to start politicizing this latest shooting, and of course, that's what's going on. A Washington Post editor is saying, repeat after me, a gun-free society. Uh, he's talking about, this is uh, Washington Post editor Fred Hyatt, and he is talking about prohibition, mass buyback, and a gun-free society. Repeat after me. Let's say that once again, a gun-free society. So this is what he believes it's time American citizens take back the Second Amendment from the NRA. Where, we, where have we heard that before? I'm pretty sure Hillary Clinton just used those talking points. But he's saying, doesn't this seem logical? Doesn't this seem much safer? I understand how difficult it would be, but it's a matter of changing the culture, culture and norms of an entire society. It would take time, but he says, only then will Congress and the Supreme Court follow. So there's that brainwashing of society. CNN as well. Uh, there was another op-ed by Jay Perini, who is a poet and novelist. He's also a teacher, and he goes on to also say, confiscate guns, make it illegal to own them. So, of course, this is the argument that people have said all along, background checks today, confiscation tomorrow. They're making their agenda very clear here. Meanwhile, someone who was actually a survivor of this Oregon shooting has come out saying uh, she, she and her entire family oppose gun control and the family says the real issue is having armed guards in school. Uh, this is 16-year-old Cheyenne Fitzgerald. She had to undergo surgery to remove one of her kidneys after she was lucky enough to escape this massacre alive. Uh, there, in support of the Second Amendment. Let's put armed guards in schools instead. And of course, once again, what we say that they're never going to point out is the fact that there are anti-depression drugs connected with these school shootings. Now, uh, this, there's a revelation that the shooter, Chris Mercer, used a screen named Lithium Love, which, of course, lithium is used to enhance the effects of SSRI drugs. And he also made a number of social media posts about uh, popping prescription pills. So, of course, the Oregon community and the city leaders have said, Obama isn't welcome to come grandstand here at the funerals. He's not welcome to come push his gun control agenda. Dozens of people were interviewed. They said, we don't want him here. Um, so, of course, that's what he's going to talk about, gun control, not SSRIs, not religious tolerance. And, of course, our, our president there, on the very same day that he's pushing for gun control, he arms ISIS-linked militants. Uh, this He authorized the shipment of guns to the Syrian opposition, also known as these ISIS-linked militants, on the exact same day. And he did the very same thing after the 2013 D.C. Navy Yard shooting. So the U.S. is the biggest arms dealer in the world. They just want to disarm Americans. We're not going to stop all violence. Violence exists around the world, sadly. Part of original sin. But... Our homicide, our homicide rates are just a lot higher than other places that, by the way, have the same levels of violence. It's just they, you can't kill as many people when you don't have easy access to these kinds of weapons. That was President Obama on one of his more recent campaigns.